This week's take home is going to be an algebra review on simplifying radicals. So open up the file and please read through the paragraph they're calling number 29, example 1 and example 2, and start your formal submission by copying down example 1 and example 2. So go ahead and do that. Stop this recording while you do that. After you've read through the paragraph called Radicals, number 29, and you've copied example 1 and example 2 on your formal submission page, you're ready to start the exercises. There are 21. Some of them are tougher than others. I'm going to do a couple of them with you. Starting with example 1, to give you an explanation of what's happening. We're looking for the perfect square factors of the radicand. That's the number under the radical symbol. And we're going to rewrite the radical we're given in a simplified form. So much like simplifying fac fractions, we're going to remember how to simplify radicals. So example 1 gives you the square root of 27 plus the square root of 12 subtracting the square root of 48. Now we want these in exact value. So we can't have a decimal approximation from your calculator here. So here's where we are. We're looking for the perfect square factors of 27. So I like to start with kind of a menu of the squares. The square of 1 is 1. The square of 2 is 4. The square of 3 is 9. The square of 4 is 16. The square of 5 is 25. The square of 6 is 36. The square of 7 is 49. The square of 8 is 64, the square of 9 is 81, the square of 10 is 100, and I believe you're writing these out with me. And every time you start one of these exercise, exercises, I believe that you will have a menu of the perfect squares. So 1 is a perfect square, 4 is a perfect square, 3, 9 is a perfect square, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, 144, etc., etc., etc. This is a menu of the perfect squares. And I'll be considering which of these perfect squares might be factors of these radicands 27, 12, 48. So I'm going to start with 27, and I'm going to rewrite that as square root of 9 times 3, where 9 is a perfect square. The reason I'm rewriting that as the square root of 9 times the square root times 3 is that I can then rewrite that as the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. Do you agree that this value is still equal to the square root of 27? and this value is still equal to the square root of 27. But I can simplify this. The square root of 9 is 3 because it's a perfect square. So I have 3 units called square root of 3 here in square root of 27. The values are the same. Go ahead and press your calculator buttons to confirm that you get the same decimal when you press the buttons for square root of 27 as when you press the buttons for square 3 square root of 3. This was added to the square root of 12. I'm going to consult my menu and find that I have perfect square factor of 4 and I'm going to rewrite that as square root of 4 times 3. The reason I'm doing that is because I can rewrite that as the square root of 4 times the square root of 3 
And I can simplify this because it's 2. 4 is a perfect square. We've done this on purpose to change the form of the expression. We haven't changed the value, but we've changed the form. It's more convenient. That doesn't say value, does it? It's more convenient this way. Now I have three square roots of three, and someone gave me two more. So this is in a form where I can add the two together. In terms of 48, I have 1 times 48, I have 2 times 24, I have 3 times what? 1, 16. Well, there's a perfect square. So I'm going to write the square root of 48 as the square root of 16 times 3. And you'll start to recognize the square root of 48, by the way, as 4 square root 3 as you continue to work with simplifying radicals. So I'm going to rewrite it now as the square root, oops, I'm getting ahead of myself, as the square root of 16 times the square root of 3. And much like factoring by grouping, you'll see that the radical you're left with in each case is a radical 3. Now these are easy to add up. 3 units of radical 3 plus 2 units of radical 3 minus 4 units of radical 3 is simply 5 radical 3 minus 4 radical 3 is simply radical 3. And let's talk our way through example two. Example two expresses the rule that says no, well, there's a couple of rules. The first one we just talked about was no perfect square factors under the radical. Number two is no radicals in the denominator. These are kind of rules we've agreed upon for expressing exact values. So this 3 over radical 6, it's not OK to have radical 6 in the denominator. So we need to change that. So consider this denominator. What value will kind of free this 6 from the radical symbol, we need to find a way to convert this 6 through some operation we can repeat in the numerator into a perfect square so that it's released from the radical. One way to do that is to multiply it by radical 6. The only way we can do that is if we've also multiplied the numer numerator by radical 6. And that's simply because this is, has a value of 1. We haven't changed the value of the expression. We've multiplied it by 1, a really unique number 1, a really unique form of number 1, but it is, it is 1. So 3 square root of 6 over square root of 36 is the same as 3 square root of 6 over 6, which is the same as square root of 6 over what's three sixths? One half. So radical six over two. So let's try number eight. Square root of 243, my menu. 
and now test some of these factors. We can tell that 121 is not a factor. We can tell that 100 is not a factor. But I don't know if 81 is a factor. I'm going to try to find the largest factors of 243. So I'm going to start testing from 81. So 243 divided by 81. Are these two numbers compatible? Push those buttons yourself to see that 3 times 81 is 243. So I can rewrite radical 243 as the square root of 81 times 3, which allows me to rewrite it as the square root of 81 times the square root of 3, which allows me to rewrite it as 3 times the square root of 3. Now in these practice, you're going to write all of these steps. So 9 square root of 3 is the correct answer for number 8. This is the correct procedure for number 8. So please start by copying the example directly off of this page. And then work through a series of steps. The first one is the product of the radicand or the factor value of the radicand. And then this is the product of the radical factors. And this is the simplification. One, two, three, four. Sometimes there's some addition. So let's review example one to see the addition. And number 21 is an interesting one. That will require some subtraction and kind of this denominator busting. It's called rationalizing the denominator. So you will either simplify or you will rationalize the denominator. or both, and you may need to combine like terms in an addition or subtraction problem. Okay, do a good job on these. Pace yourselves so that you're having your work checked. These will be due on Tuesday.